Next up, folks, plans to frack, as I say, for shale gas near Rotherham. They've been thrown out by Community Secretary Michael Gove. He claimed that a test drill in sight at Woodsets would cause noise and disturbance. But is this actually the case? And is it a top priority? Or should it be a top priority in the middle of a massive energy crisis that's crippling the national economy? Well, joining me to discuss this is the energy expert Simon Hinks, who lives close to a fracking site near Blackpool, and the Just Stop Oil supporter, James Skeet. Now, I'm going to start with, with you, Simon, because interestingly, you're near this site, but you're saying, hunky-dory, happy days, please do frack near me, aren't you? I am, yeah. It's the uh, the site near near Blackpool, the Quadrilla site that, that I'm close to, not, not the Woodset site um, uh, you guys are currently talking about, that the... Uh, it's been thrown out because of a three-metre fence. So uh, when people open their energy bills and think, oh, why is it so expensive? Uh, because somebody didn't like a three-metre fence. I find a, a fence in itself, you know, it's a, it's a joke, really. I think uh, the government decision-making uh, has been inconsistent across the country on, on these planning decisions, and they've gone against their uh, planet inspe planning inspectorate's uh, decisions to, to uh, you know, for it to be successful. And uh, actually, it wasn't Michael Gove. It was, um, it was the uh, Mr. Andrews, uh, just got that written down, is the Minister uh, for the Department of Leveling Up. Yeah. Uh, and when you talk about uh, Boris uh, not going to the uh, Doncaster Leveling Up um, conference yesterday, I, I actually went there and I spoke to uh, uh, Jacob Young, the MP for Redcar. And when you talk about the Conservatives, are, are they for or against Shell? He was not against Shell Gas. If anything, it was a case of how, how long it will take. He was more interested in you know, uh, if it can be, whether it can be speeded up. And I mean, we're looking at the net zero agenda. I mean, it's the perfect feedstock for, for blue hydrogen. So it's, it's it takes every box going. James, I'm just going to bring you in here because actually some of the the reasons that have been given for, for stopping fracking have been, well, the noise, it's too noisy or there's too much disruption. Actually, a lorry driving past your house could have potentially offer the same noise and disruption. Is it really proportionate to rule out fracking outright when we still need gra gas, I was going to say grass there, gas as part of our energy mix for the transition that you want to see, James? Well, at the current time, um, the government is ploughing ahead with 42 new oil and gas developments. Uh, and this is counter to what the International Energy Agency are telling us, what the U United Nations are telling us, that any investment in fossil fuels at this time is a death sentence to everyone that we care about. Um, and they're, uh, not only that, are they applying... They're currently funneling £236 million a week of taxpayers' money in supporting these industries that... Uh, the the chief scientist that the chief executive of BP is saying that he's got more money than he knows what to do with. It's it's absolutely nonsensical. Simon, then are you just being selfish here in advocating these fracking sites near you? Are you just actually uh, saying to hell with a generation's future and the uh, the future of the planet as well? well? I mean, you can. I think my statement is the. Uh... The Greta Thunberg disciples are the generation that's most dependent on fossil fuels in the history of humankind. It's people like the the, uh, the mobile phone uh, generation. But the thing is, talking about the gas, th this gas is to keep us warm. It's to, for us to cook with. It's for electricity. And even over the past week, uh, wind has, has basically failed again over most of the week. Yes, we've had some solar, but solar fails every evening. There's no way to harness this electricity that when it is produced. I don't know why you're shaking your head, James, because it's true. How are you going to how are you going to harness this energy and and don't say batches because that's just a fool's errand. James, you got very twentieth you got very twentieth century thinking on there. I'm afraid, mate. Uh, have a look at Rethink X's report. Um, they, they've spelled out clearly how we can um, how we can transition to 100 percent renewables with existing technologies. Germany of, uh, are currently transitioning to 100 percent renewables by 2035 on the back of what's happening in Ukraine. Um, and this is ultimately our the whole our whole the whole cost of living crisis is as a, a result of our dependence on fossil fuels. We need to be transitioning away right now. OK, we're going to have to leave it there, folks. Unfortunately, I've run out of time because my big gob goes on too much. But that was the energy expert, Simon Hinks, and the Just Stop Oil supporter, James Skeet, there. Now, in 2022 to 2023,